I was at a high level meeting at an organization uh, that is really a leader on the question of climate change. And speaking to no less than a co-president of that exclusive organization, I was saying, we got an invitation to go to Kazakhstan and to really sit down with the government representatives and communities and talk about these issues. He turned around and he said, how does one even get to Kazakhstan? In that moment, I was left with a disheartening feeling, a bitter taste of realization that for, even for these leaders, there seemed to be unimportant, too distant uh, regions in the world. And at the same time, I realized that by gesture like that, that very same leader cut himself off from resources, people power, and ways of knowing to go forward. Because we're not going anywhere unless we all go together. And not only cut himself off and his leadership, but even the possibilities and resources for his own organization. I come from the other Europe, from the bastard children of European history. Even though culturally we're very ancient people and outlived uh, culturally the Western Europe, we have always been the othered Europe, uh, Southeast Europe specifically. And I come from a very small country. There's only in the country about 700,000 of us. In the suburb of America where I currently reside, that's pretty much the suburb of a big city or Mexico City. There's about a million of us outside of the country. And it has a, it's a, a, the country that I describe as a lotus of its own. A beautiful, beautiful country with tremendous people, uh, power, and, and natural resources, right? But it is, has deep, deep, muddy historical roots. And where I'm going with this story about, you know, some of these destinations that we do not know enough about is that in this world that we live in, there are no inconsequential destinations. There are no inconsequential destinations and inconsequential perspectives and experiences and knowledge. Because only in terms of epidemic or any kind of disaster, migrations or anything like that, I mean, that certainly reminds us uh, that we all matter, uh, especially at the times of trouble. So, Montenegro is a really interesting country because we experienced a civil war, again, very unusual. Uh, <laughs> imagine a civil war where you have four warring sides, everybody against everybody else. And in the times of that, coming from a kind of warriors, uh, highlanders uh, culture, for the first time, Montenegro said, no, there is no foreign invader, there is no oppressor against whom we can clearly say, enough. For the first time in our history, freedom fighting history, we said no. And ended up taking in refugees from all sides. At one point, the pressure on the local uh, population was so tremendous because 12% of the population were refugees from all sides and we took everybody in at the times of tremendous struggle. 1989 is when the Berlin Wall fell and we ended up being sort of the sacrificial lamb to the reordering of the world because we are a strategic point between the East and West and we certainly are a prized piece of real estate, like I said, really good resources. What happened, yet another fascinating fact, speaking of no inconsequential learning and experiences and perspectives, in already in the heat of civil wars, 1991, Montenegro, in the middle of it, declared itself the first ecological state in the world. We have a way long way to go. But there is a point of reference, just like the very first one that climbs Himalaya and puts that little flag up there. We can't deny anymore that there is a point of reference, that somebody has gone there. And in that process, Setting that new standard, a new point of collective reference, Montenegro decided to set a different course to its own development. Honoring um, 
uh, His Excellency's Turk uh, comment that we're all in transition. Our transitions have been extended by continual econo-political re repackaging of the country. And in that process, there is so much to be learned. So what I'm calling for today is a new process of social learning, new process of collaborative learning, and coming to places and forums like this where there is a representation of this kind, where, it, where there is a co-sharing of experiences because we will have to devise new ways. Some of the people that have realized what it takes to really take uh, uh, our collective forward, such as Mohamed Yunus, was the one who got a Nobel Prize because he understood that we need to be learning from village ways, as we were, we were mentioning before. So my invitation today, as there are many examples of countries like this that have done a remarkable, remarkable job, such as Bhutan, tiny places, remarkable social experiments and social accomplishments, such as Bhutan, such as Costa Rica, and many other places. My call to you is to be mindful and to be a different kind of leader, inclusive, uh, uh, highly aware of the richness and the diversity of knowledge and unifying that knowledge for collective action for change. Thank you.